right, I'm here with Chloe of Chloe's Kingdom. Hello. Chloe, what is this race all about? How did it get started? Well, me and my dad have been going to races for a long time, and we enjoyed going to all of them. <laughs> What's the strategy here? Uh, go really fast and don't crash.
right, here we go. Look, I got the GoPro on. <laughs> See? Cash, keep it going, buddy. Nice work, bud. Good job, buddy. You're in first. Have it. There's a start to the Chloe's Kingdom, that expert race. I'm going to do some voiceovers here. People seem to enjoy some of the last races I did where I was talking over 
and explaining what's going through my mind as I'm doing these things. As you can see, the start of the uh, vet expert, uh, the afternoon classes in general, can be quite aggressive and there's really no room to be playing nice when you're heading out there. I mean, obviously you need to be safe and don't put anyone at risk, but we're all there to race and win and bumping bars a little bit at the beginning. Right now I'm following the uh, second, first place guy, I'm following the leader. He made a mistake here, I get over, I fall, and inadvertently I block them, but I get back on my bike and start pulling away and just try and maintain that lead. And as you'll see, I start to get into a bit of a flow and things were working really well for me. So this was a two-day race. This is the first day, uh, this is the Saturday of a double header up at Chloe's Kingdom. And the terrain um, on this day was just perfect. Um, the previous year, uh, there was, uh, it was still great. There was a lot of loose rock. Uh, for whatever reason, this year, all that, I mean, the loose rock was still there, but it wasn't what it was in the previous year. And I think it's just a, a product of having that race before and all the great work that uh, Quinn and Alfonso and everyone at Chloe's Kingdom has put into making this race just truly exceptional. It's, it's an unbelievable XC race and what a special treat that it was a, a double header weekend. This was by far my favorite race weekend of the year. Um, it was so great to see, most importantly, my son hit the podium twice. Uh, that was really rewarding to see how hard he's been working to try and get that get them his results and the first day he placed second, second day he placed first and what I was most happy about with him is just his attitude towards it all because he did have first place on the first day by quite a lead and he fell and we've been working on trying to maintain composure when you fall, picking yourself back up, breathing and it seems like that's coming together and and even though he came in second, he was a great sport about it and uh, got up the next morning, raced all again and managed to secure first on the second day. So right now, uh, my son is leading in points in Mini B and I couldn't be uh, proud of him. He's just doing such a great job mentally and physically and his riding ability has come so far. So here I am now uh, in the lead on day one and I was just feeling great. I'm, I'm moving fast. I felt like I could just do anything on the bike today. I've been training a lot. Um, a lot of mountain biking. Uh, that's really hit there. That hurt. I remember that hurt a lot. Uh, a lot of mountain biking. That really helps with the cardio and also not just your physical fitness but also your line selection because you learn on a mountain bike that where the weight actually happens on, a, on a, a dirt bike as well because when you hit a hard route or something on a mountain bike um, the weight of the bike doesn't absorb it like it does on a dirt bike so you start to become a lot more sensitive on how to hit routes uh, how to hit lines and conserve energy because just like a dirt bike you have to use the momentum and energy conservation and preservation and momentum is all critically important in dirt biking so you know, now it gets to the point where it's intuitive when you're on a mountain bike, but the lines I'm looking at here are the same lines I'd be riding in my mountain bike. And so for those of you who want to get um, improve your riding, uh, definitely do both, right? Saddle time and a dirt bike is everything, but saddle time and a mountain bike is really going to achieve a lot more too because you're going to do physical fitness and your riding ability at the same time. So, uh, yeah, so at this point, oh, I should also say one of the other things, oh, watch your head. One of the other things that, um, that was amazing about this weekend is seeing so many of my friends um, hit the podium as well. That's the nice thing about a double header is it gives everyone a ch second chance. And just watching everyone uh, get up to the podium, uh, Daryl, Dave, James, Tony, um, Brian, um, Rob, uh, it's just it was just so great um, and, and watching how far everyone's riding has come uh, it, it was just such a great weekend to spend with them and, and what an added bonus to see a lot of them hit the uh, podium my buddy Adam and Dimitri both riding super well as well even though they didn't hit the podium I couldn't be more impressed with the way they were handling themselves out there unfortunately Dimitri's friend 
uh, ended up breaking his leg, and uh, I think that um, really, you know, affected his ability to focus. And uh, but he, did notwithstanding, pushed through it and managed to uh, pull off a really impressive um, uh, result on day one. And had he stuck around for day two, uh, I'm, I'm almost sure he would have podium. But anyway, this section here, um, you know, this is just an awesome, awesome trail. It was that perfect texture of loneliness but also tackiness and there was no dust and it's just so fast it was just awesome and i'm like over the moon riding here i'm just loving it and like i said i just felt like i could do anything on the bike here i was moving as fast as i wanted to i was pretty much pinned in second gear the whole way through and then you'll hear me sometimes shifting up to third on the um, on the straighter sections um and I guess one of the things that I've learned uh, over time that's helped a lot, especially in stuff like this, because it started to get really gnarly on the second day. Unfortunately, I didn't get any GoPro footage for that because uh, I just recorded the one day. Um, is you really got to try and, as you're coming into these routes and obstacles, really get back on your seat. And I know you've heard it before, but stand, stand, stand. This is a standing race. Every time I got onto my seat, I was back on my my pegs. And you have to really think about it. You, you can't just, uh, you know, sort of think, oh, one or the other, it doesn't matter. Like you need to consciously put an effort into getting back onto your pegs. When you get bucked down onto your seat, get back up because the next buck might be coming. And if you're sitting on your seat, you don't have time for another mistake. Being on your pegs allows you to um, absorb the unexpected, um, so it acts as double suspension. You know, you've got. You get to think of it this way: being on your pegs is a second chance to keep riding, because your suspension will absorb so much, and whatever it can't absorb, you can absorb in your legs if you're standing. But if you don't have that buffer, then as soon as you have maximized your suspension then that's it. You don't get a second chance and roots don't come in nice uniform spaces. So whenever you get off your pegs, get back on your pegs and get up high. And as you're coming into these roots and sections, you want to be back. Oh, see, there, I got bucked, I think twice there. And I got onto my seat and I didn't have it. So um, yeah, boy, this was stuff was crazy. So gnarly. Um, yeah, so when you're when you're trying to um, keep these speeds up, trying to keep that front wheel nice and light, um, and getting onto your peg. So right there, for example, on the aggressive corners, more than 90 degrees typically, I'll sit down right at the front of my seat to make an aggressive turn, spin out like there, and then back on my feet right there, back on my feet, back on my feet, go, 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 and then back in the saddle and just pushing in lots of throttle. So here I'll sort of hopefully be able to explain what my legs are doing. I'm on my feet, on my saddle, and then back on my feet right here. Leaning back, leaning back, go back of the feet, back of the feet, on my saddle, down, left leg out, up, back on my feet, still on my feet, pushing, back on my saddle, boom. And so yeah, you can, you can sort of get that flow, but you have to be always thinking, get back on your feet. And I know it sounds tiring, but it's actually less tiring once you get used to it because on your feet is a very efficient way to ride. So um, anyway, let's watch this for a bit. This is gonna be a long video and for those of you who watched this far, I'm sure you've enjoyed watching me just trying to get through the woods here as fast as I can. Um, there's another really interesting part coming up um, that cost me the lead and hopefully you watch through to that and I'll explain that. Um, and what happened after because that's quite a story um, but yeah here I am in the lead and sit back watch until the end of the, the lap and I hope you enjoy and if you want to fast forward to the drama then and do that as well
can see there, I'm starting to catch up to the, well, was starting to catch up to the expert guys. Um, another drop, so I do catch up to a couple of them uh, shortly, but that, that didn't help. So you notice as I'm going through this stuff, you can see a lot of these little roots and rocks. If you're sitting, I, I know I'm just repeating myself, but if you're sitting through this stuff, that you're just gonna be sliding all over the place. So if you're riding and you ever feel your back tire just sliding back and forth or your front giving out, that is exactly the reason why you need to get on your pegs and get that weight more over your back wheel and keep that front wheel wheel light that's how you're able to maintain the speed through this sort of stuff where it's loose and there's rocks and there's roots because if that wheel front wheel is light it'll pop over those roots and the back wheel is heavy because you're standing on your pegs and the weight is properly distributed low that's how you're just going to be able to glide over all this stuff and it's intimidating because you're higher up you feel higher but just keep in mind your weight is lower it's, it, it may feel safer that you're sitting and that your feet are closer to the ground, but it's not actually safer because you, what, it's not where you want your weight lower. And the only way to do that is to get to the pegs. And that's how it's going to keep you stable as you're trying to do this stuff where it gets loose and roots and loose rocks like that right there. This section here was really fun. It was fast and you're flying by and there's often spectators watching you because it's right in the camping area. And you can really get some speed up here, but it you also have to be careful because there's a lot of these little rocks and this is very much where you need to be on your pegs, hovering over your back seat, um, similar to like what a position you'd be doing whoops on a track. And you just gotta keep that back wheel planted because if you start getting that weight you're sitting on your seat high there's so much potential to get bucked and then you're going to be flying over the bars at 50 kilometers an hour so yeah this was a great section to try and make up some time and then back into the woods
am coming up to the first um, uh, expert that I'm I'm passing now, and the lines are usually spread about a minute and a half apart. Uh, so this is a great sign for me. It means I'm you know at a good pace, uh, and I can't see or hear the person behind me. So when you have this opportunity, you want to make sure that you can get by this person as quickly and as clean, cleanly as possible because if the next person behind you can't do that then that's going to widen the gap even further so as i'm coming in here i think i'm double revving so that the rider can hear me and um, trying to keep a nice clean pass keep going and um, maintain that speed so whoever that was thank you Some of you might be wondering what I'm running here. Um, my bike is a 250 XCW KTM 2018. I'm for this race. I ran Starcross medium, uh, Starcross five mediums, so medium terrain, not medium compound, medium terrain, and um, they worked really well. The traction was excellent. There were some parts where, especially on the second day, where it got a bit slippery, that I would, you know, I, I would consider running even a, uh, a gummy tire, an aggressive gummy tire, like a Dunlop AT81EX. But overall, the Michelins held up really, really well. Um, I've always found those tires to be really good for me. I don't have any tire sponsorship. I pay full price, and I just buy what I think works the best. And yeah, the Starcross 5 mediums front and back here, running with ultra heavy duty tubes. And the PSI I was running was about, I think it was uh, 12 in the front and 8 in the back uh, for this race. And again, that worked quite well. You just want to have that balance for, you know, the traction here was quite good. So I didn't need to drop the pressure way low and run the risk of a, a flat. So, uh, yeah, it, it, that was a good uh, setup for, uh, for this terrain. coming into uh, near the end of the first lap so you come back on this swamp here and there I can see my friend uh, Dimitri Russian roulette so another expert class rider and I'm coming up on him I think much to his surprise to see me um, this hill just incidentally this hill became crazy later on and one of my last laps on the second day um, I dropped my bike and pinned it really bad but fortunately I was enough of a lead on the second day to maintain that and um, was able to get my bike up but that was that got really nasty um, here there's there he is Russian roulette make sure to follow him on YouTube he's got a great channel great rider really knowledgeable on bikes Mm-hmm. 
So this is about 20 minutes in um, on a two hour race. The pros do two and a half hours. And I think you can see by now how you know hard um, I'm pushing myself with the riding uh, and up on my pegs, down on my pegs and how physically demanding this is. Fitness is such a key part of being able to race XCs. You can be a fast rider, but you also have to maintain that for two hours plus. Uh, on any ride so I can't you know stress that enough if you want to try and uh, be competitive in any type of XC racing you really need to train physically so that you feel good going into the hour uh, rather than completely exhausted and it's actually you know if you're in good shape it's it's a good strategy to just maintain because 50% of the guys or more unless you're riding in pro class are, are going to just not be in the shape they need to be and their lap times are going to start to decline and you're going to be able to catch them just by going at your regular pace. Um, so yeah, get on those mountain bikes. This is a good lesson here because when you crash, one thing I always think to myself is, which way did I fall? Did I fall to the right or did I fall to the left? And when I'm trying to evaluate how I'm going to approach it next time, I'm doing the opposite. So if I fell to the right, I want to make sure I punch it more to the left. Everything, everything hitting it more perpendicular and more speed. When people crash, they often come around slower the second time, but you actually want to be thinking, how do I get it faster and more perpendicular? So here we are, completion of first lap. You can see a bunch of people there coming in. I don't know the times there didn't work, but I'm in the lead. And then this additional section is, is put in, nice big mud pit. I just went around the mud. You know, you got to think strategically. Um, the most direct way is not always the best way. And you have to think, is it worth it for me to get stuck in the mud when it's only going to take me a third of a second more to go around it? Really think of your lines. And one lesson I learned um, uh, taking a course with Chris Birch is watch where people are standing because where people are standing is where the ground is secure and not wet. And even if you have to point towards them, you know they're going to be standing in safe footing. So normally I just sort of end it there and 
kind of say, well, there it is. There's a full lap of Chloe's Kingdom. But you'll see I had a bit of a mishap. Um, right here, I had a good lead in first. I was feeling great. Wasn't too tired. And I thought, okay, I just need to maintain. But you'll see in the next minute or so what happened. Broke a chain. So good. That was an OEM one too, it's a strong one. You want me to hold this one? Yeah, no, I'm okay. Thanks so. though. Bummer, right? Eh? I was in the lead too. It's not broken? That's uh, Steve Brand right there. He noticed <laughs> he's oh, like, man, I can't your chain isn't checked. broken. It just fell off. So now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I just walked it back up this hill, trying to get back. Like in total, I checked the GoPro, and I at this point have lost over 10 minutes in time. I have no idea what place I'm in. Had a good lead, but certainly not a 10-minute lead. And so chain, uh, sorry, uh, Steve was uh, kind enough to help me out there. We just uh, rolled it back onto the sprocket and. Yeah, okay. fire it up and let's go fight no, and I try and get back up to the podium. Off. I didn't realize that, that was and broken. Yeah, in the end, that's exactly what happened. Keep I ended up um, okay. pushing as hard as I could, well, trying to maintain my composure um, on this race. I ended up getting back up to first. Sorry, uh, yeah. on this race, I ended up getting so back up to third. Back and then on the race uh, following day, I ended up placing first. Yeah, it was just a great weekend, so we're all you can watch the tail end of this video of me burning out and trying my best to uh, to catch up. But thanks for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, this uh, video. I'm in the Bay Leagues. Tell don't miss me. Ballin' like Houston, ayy, feelin' like Whitney I need a bag, bruh, send it too quickly I 
I'm making his star Like I'm in the big leagues Told him that I gotta go, dawg I'm riding a road, y'all I think that I'm back in my bag now So I need that go, y'all Got hits when he throwin' the fastball Just too quick for it Peelin' off like the whip points Seen it after this piss point I got too much, I gotta tend to Car payments and the rent due Told y'all that I'm six foot But with the money stabbing, I'm ten to Too much that I've been through So I put it all in that rear view Clean money in a black whip Got old problems with the friends new I'm making his dog, like I'm in a big lease. Yeah, total mama hit it out of stands. I deserve another hundred bands.